What up, YouTube? It's your boys, Detroit Love, P Dubs, Michael B. The Game Genie, and Rostalgia. What? What? Can you smell what the Super Game Room dudes is bringing? Let's get it started. Man, Detroit Love bringing the heat, bringing the heat tonight. Thanks, my friend. I appreciate that. Get me all fired up. Get me ready to host another episode of the Super Game Room Dudes, your arcade and gaming podcast show. With me, as always, is Carl Detroit Love. Everyone in the live chat, say hi to Carl. Carl, how you doing? Well done on that intro. Man, you know how I do it. Fantastic. Fantastic. And with us, as always, sitting beneath me is Rostalgia, the king of emulation. How are you, Rostalgia? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Good, good. And, jo and luckily, we're lucky to have him here, guys. The star <laughs> of the retro buzz, Michael B. The Game GD. How are you, Michael? Welcome to the Super Game Room, dudes. We appreciate you coming to your home turf. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> guys, big shout out to Michael B. The Game GD. He's been on the last couple episodes of the retro buzz. Make sure you guys tune into the retro buzz on Friday nights. What is it? 6 p.m. Eastern, a couple hours before we go live. Make sure you guys tune into that show, uh, Cool Toy, Glenn's Retro Show, um, The Tech Buzz, Stephen Haywood. We love those guys, and you've done a good job uh, filling in on that show the last couple weeks. Thanks so much for that, man. Has it been a fun experience? Yeah, they're super fun guys. I really like talking to them, so it's cool that uh, they've allowed me to come on two of the last three weeks, and I kind of forced my way on during the community show, but <laughs> hey, here we are. <laughs> well, good, well, man. I do want to correct you. You can't use... The word super for any other live shows that's reserved I, yeah. didn't, I didn't say it was the super retro buzz <laughs> <laughs> it's now the super retro buzz or if we ever did a show with them again like when we did our mega show it should just be called the super retro buzz dudes mm -hmm. there you go there you go well what's up guys appreciate you guys tuning in and if you don't know what show you're watching you're watching the super game room dudes it's time to get hyped nostalgia are you hyped so hyped how hyped oh. are you are Super you hyped? Oh yeah. Are you, are you Mojo Rally hyped? Do I need to get yeah. you hyped? For yeah. real. No, no, no. We we don't get hyped. We stay hyped. We That's don't right. get hyped. We stay hyped. like this. Yo, what's up? It's your boy WWE Superstar Mojo Rally coming at you, and you are watching the best arcade and gaming podcast show on YouTube, the Super Game Room Dudes, where they don't get hyped, they stay hyped. Check them out. There you go. <laughs> Are you hyped now, Nostalgia? I have no idea who he is. Oh my oh, god, man. really? You don't I know who you don't I know don't, who that is? No, I have no oh, idea who that is. Who is that? That's Mojo. Mojo Rally. I'm assuming he's a wrestler. Yeah. He is a wrestler uh, and he used to play for the Green Bay Packers. He's a former football player, too. Oh, oh man. Yeah, well, he, don't, he don't just get hyped, he stay hyped. All right, guys, that was fantastic. Now let's move on and start talking about some arcade and gaming news. Let's kick it off talking about At Games stuff. So, for instance, um, At Games has a few things going on. Uh, so we have here, we have, uh, what did they get here? The Legends Link application. Legends Link application just got released uh, this week, and that is the brand new Arcade Net Link application to locally stream your PC games, so if you own games on Steam, like Streets of Rage 4 and all these great games that should be on an arcade, you can uh, locally stream those over your uh, network in your home, so you're playing for free, there's no cost, no subscription, no payment required, and you're able to play. Now, I have the link, I just haven't had a chance to set it up yet, I haven't been able to test it. Uh, did any of you guys get a chance either? I know it literally just came off the presses, right? Yeah, I, I've no. tested it. Okay, and what was your experience with? Was it more was it more stable than the prior Arcade Net Link application? And guys in the live chat, did you try out Legends Link? And what games are you playing on your Legends Ultimate Arcade machines and other devices? Let me know in the live chat. Go ahead, Rostalgia. Yeah, I mean there was there was lots of bug fixes and things like that. Uh, I didn't have any issues at all uh, with it. I didn't spend a tremendous amount of time, but it was good. It was uh, it was the experience I was expecting out of a out of a I guess a software or service like that. So it was good. Good, good connectivity, better connectivity with Windows 10 type PCs and all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I'm running a Windows 10 uh, gaming PC. I didn't have any problems at all. It was very straightforward. Installation was nice and clean, and uh, yeah, no problems. <laughs> we got a comment here from Apple of My Eye. He says it works well. He played Pirate Pinball, and I don't think he's talking about pirated pinball games. He's talking about Wick or Pinball Wicked, which is a pirate themed game on Steam. It's one of my favorite pinball games of all time. Guys, if you haven't played Pinball Wicked on Steam, go ahead and pick it up, and it is super fun to play on your Legends devices. Go ahead, Carl, while we show this sticker by Sling Spade. Thanks so much, Sling. Well, I'm just wondering, can you guys explain more? Because I'm, I'm, I've never used Arcade Net because I can never get it working, so um, what, what can I expect with this Legends link? What, what can I play? Well, Steam, can I play some the Arcade? The, um, what's it called? Arcade, arcade link. link arcade link yeah legends link well the old one was called arcade link right mm -hmm. Ar arcade link playing. yeah now it's called legends link yeah okay so what can i what can i play from my pc what type of things can i play with that uh, there's probably a couple hundred uh steam games that are compatible with the controls on the legends uh i know on their website under the byog section of their website they have a list of the games but some of the games like, you know, Streets of Rage 4, Mortal Kombat 11, Street Fighter 4, like a lot of these games, Tekken, what is that, Tekken 7, um, also, yeah, there's, geez, uh, Horizon Chase Turbo, um, man, how many, dude, I have so many games that I played there. Um, we could have stopped that Tekken, uh, so let me, yeah, I'm going to have to get that fired up and see if I can get that working. Cuphead. Can can I play yeah, the Oregon through. Trail? Oh, uh, that's the other thing too. Is depending on what you're using on your PC, there's like some DOS games that you can play and stuff like that. And there's actually a lot of freeware out there. Like if you go to like abandonware.com, there's games like you know Ducktales Arcade and a whole bunch of arcade DOS games that you could uh, play. And these are free. These aren't pirated games. You're not doing anything. Um, nefarious or anything like that there's lots of free games out there to play so it's just basically you're streaming your pc what it is is you know app games has the byog servers that you can pay a monthly fee for right and that's for folks who don't have a gaming pc a gaming rig but guys like us who have these rigs we can play this stuff for free on our systems just using the legends link application so that's pretty pretty cool um, you could play pinball games. Yes, you could play Cuphead, Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. You can play, guys. What games uh, have you guys been playing using the Arcade Net now Legends Link? Keep them in the chat. I love seeing this, so we can give other folks ideas. Space Invaders Extreme, pirating is wonderful. Keep them coming, guys. <laughs> uh, Hollywood Polo really wants us to play in this Pinball FX3 tournament, so we'll have to check it out. Hey, Sling, we appreciate the stickers by Fred, but we can't see him using this streaming software, so unfortunately we can't see him. What were you saying, Michael B.? Go ahead. So your average gamer is hosting this Pinball FX3 uh, tournament, and people have asked me nonstop, are you going to be in it? But I need more details. Can someone send me some information? Yeah, I, this I, is the first time hearing about it, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this is about uh this is from our good friend Mike. We never say his full name. According to the Retro Buzz, Michael B has been drafted to SmackDown, but he can still appear on the red brand until Doug is called back to NXT. That's why you're making the rounds. That's why you're making the rounds. Ryan says he's just popping in to say, What's up? Thanks so, so much for doing that, Ryan. Okay, so guys, uh go ahead and download Legends Link off uh at Games website. Give it a shot. Stream your PC games onto an arcade platform. It's cool. It's free. It's fun. You don't have to pay for it. It's awesome. And you get to play some more modern games. Um, other bit of news for at games guys is we are five days away, five days away from the Zakaria pinball packs being unleashed upon the at games community of members. We're talking 105 pinball games that you'll have access to. Now, what's really cool is I'm assuming this is going to be tied to a firmware update. So those of you with ArcadeNet subscriptions, you don't have to do anything except update your firmware. And when you do, you'll have access to those uh, 105 games, just like you do the um, the Gottlieb games on other devices. Um, and then, of course, on the pinball machine itself, if you want to play those games on the pinball. If you bought the packs, you'll have to keep your eyes on your emails uh, to fulfill your payments. 
uh, to at games and then get your codes, and that way you can run the games. Rostalgia, why don't you folks know, how are they going to run their Zakaria games on their other devices? I know we've mentioned it in every episode, but of course we might have some new folks watching. Go ahead, my friend. Well, and just just to be clear, I don't think that those uh, Zakaria games are coming to arcade net at the same time as the uh, the 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 game packs are so oh, i thought they were i think, I think like there's everybody. i think there's a staggered release to just kind of yeah. make sure people are being properly taken care of in terms of that and not staggered release in the sense of like x number of tables released at a time i'm saying there's a staggered release from the time that you can re- like pick up the game packs that you bought on nod versus what's going to be available on arcade net so there's a little bit of a, a, a delay there i think so um but yeah no in terms of what we're talking about from nod that's what you're referring to Mm -hmm. yeah so people who purchased the zakaria game packs um they'll be receiving uh redemption codes by email if they haven't already received those uh and once the, the the firmware that's going out on that day comes out they just have to follow a certain process redeem those uh codes and download those game packs to fdx and run those things natively. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, guys, so you're going to put them on your flash drives. Now, I'm actually a little surprised to hear. I did not know about that, Rostalgia, that there might be a delay for those who have an arcade net subscription because we didn't need to buy the packs because of our subscription. So we're going to actually, unfortunately, have to wait. Uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be a long time, right, buddy? Is it going to be like like two hour wait? Is that what I, I don't know how long the the, the difference is. All I, I, I all I know is about the the game packs right now. That's oh, okay. that's the piece that I'm involved in. So, all right, guys. Well, we will do some digging in. We'll talk to At Games. We'll try and find out uh, when are the game packs going live for those who paid for them, and when are they going live for those who subscribed. So we'll try and get to the bottom of that mystery for you. Now, Detroit Love, you and I, I know we did some live streams on our actual pinball machines playing the Zakaria pinball game, one of them, Magic Castle, that was provided to us by At Games. What was your experience playing the Zakaria game versus the Gottlieb games and just playing it on that platform? Was it good, bad? Yeah, I mean, the, the Magic Castle, you know, I mean, it's an older table, but it's, you know, but it's still newer than, the, say, the Gottlieb, a lot of the Gottlieb tables. It just plays much better than the Gottlieb. You know, we've been, both of us have played the Toy Shocks you know, and so we're familiar with most of those tables. Uh, the the At Games product has more uh, of those tables, got these tables, but they all play much differently than the uh, uh, Zachariah, or however you want to pronounce it. Those tables just play better. The the physics in it uh-huh. is just it's just more real. You know, so I definitely so I'm 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 delighted to have more tables because I've just been playing that one table <laughs> out of the whole 22 that I have. Uh, as the my primary table to play, so I can't wait until those are released because they're they're just much funner to play. Period. Now, now some folks are actually going to play those packs on other devices that are not the pinball machine itself. Michael B, you played uh, that game on the one of the Gamer Pro devices, right? Yeah, that is correct. And how was uh, it? How was it? Really good. I, I I have to echo the comments that Detroit Love made. Uh, I mentioned it in my stream. I find the physics are so different from Magic Pixel and the Zachariah tables. I find them to be older tables, and they don't have a lot of the bells and whistles that some of the Gottlieb tables, like Haunted House, that I love. But they just play so much more differently. There's uh, the way the ball looks, the way the ball moves. Mm-hmm. The physics are just so good and so enjoyable. So I'm a huge fan of the Zach. Zachariah or Zacharia, however you want to say it, tables. Zachariah. I always get that. So, Zachariah. Zachariah. Well, what's funny is, in my opinion, uh, Magic Pixel does great work from a software uh, standpoint. There's no denying it. Um, their games, whether you played on an Xbox, whether you played on Steam, whether you played on this Legends Pinball, the physics are really, really good. Where Zacharia gets some heat from folks is these are tables that are really old. I mean, they used to be the third largest pinball maker in the country. Um, And the tables, the original tables, which are part of the pinball package, the original tables aren't that exciting because they're so old. Now, they're exciting for some of us like me because I love old pinball. I love old pinball. A lot of folks just like the newer video game type pinball, right? 
I love pinball based on real machines. And what uh, Zachariah did and Magic Pixel did is they kept coming out with a new version of each table. Here is the EM table. Here's the solid state version of that table. Here's the... Um, Here's the remake version of the table. Here's the deluxe version of the table. So a lot of the games out of the 105, it's the same game done three or four different ways. So it's kind of cool to say, you know what, today I'm going to play Robot. Like, I'm all excited about playing the game Robot. And I'm going to play it as an, a solid state table, move on to like a remake table, then play the deluxe version when the deluxe version uh, comes to the Legends platform as well, and all that kinds of stuff, right? So what, where they get heat is these are old tables, right? And yeah, the deluxe versions, they really modernize them, kind of give you like the Zen Studios Pinball FX3 type experience where you actually have characters on the screens, you have animated toys on the table, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, right? Um, but some folks, they don't, they, they just, you know, it's not Marvel. It's not Star Wars. You know what I mean? It's not E.T. or Jaws. So they think they're bad. But if you actually give them a shot, they're gorgeous tables. They're well-designed. The physics are really, really good. I think a lot of folks are going to enjoy them. I think a lot of folks are going to enjoy them. What do you think about that, Rostalgia? Uh, I, I like the tables. Uh, I've had the the luxury to, to play around with them. And I think that those tables are very optimized uh, or they're optimized quite well. And the work that Magic Pixel went in to make these tables run really efficiently on all of the App Games products is, is pretty impressive. We're looking at um, you know 1080p 60 frames a second, obviously, on the Legends Pinball. Mm -hmm. But we're also getting 1080p 60 frames per second on all of the other devices, too. So that's yeah, like yeah. a pretty substantial you know, benchmark to set. So mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty good. So Mike uh, wants to know how much, how big of a flash drive does he need uh, to put his pinball game packs on? Uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, this has only got to be a few gigs for all those tables. I don't imagine this being, you need a 256 gigabyte hard drive. No, no, I mean, no. if you, if you have a 16 gigabyte hard drive, you're going to be able to fit all the games on there. I wouldn't even worry you, about. You don't it. even need that much. Probably, yeah, not even an eight gig, right? Not no. maybe a two, maybe a two gig. Who knows? Right? You want more than two? Well, more than two. Okay. More than two. More yeah, than two. And I think his issue too was he says, "Hey, I got coin ops as well, coin ops X." Um, uh, so with those combined, he just wanted to make sure he has enough space. Yeah, yeah. with these with these forces combined, right, right. Um, so I'm excited about those games coming to this platform because if you think about it now, you could. Uh, we had a gentleman, and unfortunately, his chat disappeared because the chat's really flying right now. Um, a guy commented, I wanted to put it on the screen, but I missed it. He goes, but hey, these games are already on Steam. Why should I play them? Well, you have to have a PC to do that, right? You have to have your PC, and either you plug it into the Legends via OTG to play Steam games, um, or you stream it via Legends Link application when that feature becomes available for the Legends Pinball, which it's not available as of today, but it's something that's coming down the road. Um, but a lot of folks, they don't want to go through the hassle of plugging in a PC or doing all that kind of stuff. They just want to turn on their machine, have access to games. So that's why you'll be able to, that's why at games partnered with Zakaria to sell them, to optimize them for their hardware, to play them and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'll be honest with my audience. I'm pretty sure that the Steam versions are probably going to be a better looking, maybe a better playable experience because usually PC versions always are. Look at all the heat that Arcade 1UP is getting right now from their pinball machines, but we'll get to that when we talk about Arcade 1UP. But these versions, if you guys saw our live streams, they look great, they play great, and uh, you know they're going to be fun. They're going to be fun, and you have them on your flash drive, easy access, no fiddling with a PC. That's why, That's why. what was that statistic? Was it like 60, no, uh, was it 40, Was it 47 or 67% of all owners bought the pinball packs? Do you guys remember from our nod show? It was a pretty big number. It was like, it was huge. I can't I don't, remember. I don't remember the stats, no. Oh, Mike Caputo says we're doing every time P-Dub says all that kinds of stuff, we're taking shots. God, I hate it that I say that so much. And guys, it's it's not intentional. It just it's like a tick. It happens. So all right. So moving on from Zakaria. Um, also at games, uh, the Primbo machines are starting to uh, ship more in mass uh, to all those wave one holders. A lot of people on their fan pages on Discord, Reddit, Facebook have all 
been receiving their pinball machines. And uh, what do you guys think the feedback has been, uh, Michael B? Uh, what have you noticed uh, folks have been saying about the Legends pinball? And guys in the chat, what do you guys think folks have been saying about the Legends pinball? Uh, throw it in the chat. I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, I have seen nothing but positive comments so far. Everybody's really excited that gets it. A uh, few outliers with minor issues. I mean, it's a brand new product, but overall, it's been a very positive relationship. People are happy with the product. They're happy with the games that are there, and they're happy what what else they can do with the table. It's like every at games product lately. Everything's getting knocked out of the park. It provides so much functionality for people, and it wins wins them over pretty quickly once they start playing with it. <laughs> What about you, Carl? Have you seen any comments on the fan pages or in other forums? And do you think folks are happy? Do they like it? Do they hate it? What do you think? Oh, I've been seeing a lot of positive. I've seen a few people that had some shipping issues, and, and that's just with the world we live in. Sometimes you have people that don't that work for these companies don't care about your products you're making here. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is horrible. Um, what, 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 what are you trying to say here, Mike? Well, the, the guy posted the picture earlier in the week, and the box like was side was ripped right off, and he was like, "Yeah, at games, what happened there? Yeah, at games sent it out like that. <laughs> no, that's obviously it was dropped off a truck or something that had nothing to do with at games. Right. Totally yeah, shipping kind of issue, right? Cracks me up, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, they they picked the shippers. Okay, yeah, we we all pick shippers, but those shippers have to be responsible. Uh, obviously, they don't pick them up that way, um, but. You know, Gamer Mom uh, uh, 77, she got hers and she put the sound, new sound system into it. And, and you know, uh, I just, I'm just, I've said this from the start. This is just going to change everything from uh, that scale of the toy shot to those veeping, you know. It's just Turn off your Star and, Wars. Yeah. Dear God, quick, go, no, go, go. It, it, it keeps go. popping on. We're going to get demonetized. Go, oh. go, <laughs> <laughs> go. All right. So while he's doing that, Rostalgia, what have, what have you been seeing from folks? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really spent a tremendous amount of time like filtering through uh, social media. But from what I have seen, I've seen like a lot of really uh, ingenuity, to be honest. I see a lot of people taking these machines um, and modding them uh, and throwing their, their PCs in there, turning them into like BPX machines. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who aren't doing that, they seem to really like the machines. Uh, I mean, it's it's a good, solid device, so mm -hmm. I, I don't see why people wouldn't like it. But yeah, no, I think uh, I think overall uh, community feedback's been good. Yeah, I just wanted to jump back in. I, I actually, I'm not a modding guy. You guys know that. But mine shows up on April 8th. I am so excited. I, I've already gone out. I bought Chris ball, Christmas lights. I've got several stickers done up that says pinball. I'm going to mod this to be exactly like the Zakaria table. It's going to, no, the, uh, what was it? The well played. Well played. Well played. Be amazing. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Um, so what I've seen is this. I've seen, uh, we've had a number of folks, and this is with every product, with every company, with shipping damage, right? And that is just unfortunate. We, we've we covered this extensively on, on our shows. I could literally put something in an armored truck and drive it across the street from my house to the neighbor across the street and something can happen, right? And it's just mathematically, somebody's gonna get a damaged machine upon arrival. And it's really heartbreaking when you see that um, because folks have been waiting, they've been hyped, they've been so hyped, they've been Mojo Raleigh hyped. And then their stuff arrives broken, right? And At Games has done a pretty damn good job of packing that pinball machine. I don't see how they could possibly have packed it better. This machine is definitely packed better than anything they've ever packed before. Big products, small products. A lot of effort was put into it. And unfortunately, shipping damage has happened. Um, yeah. So that's heartbreaking to see. And mine personally, you know, I had, it was clear a forklift went straight through it and, I, right. and i've mentioned on my thing about this this little mark here but i never really noticed this dimple here <laughs> but that's that you can see this is solid steel something hit that thing mm -hmm. really hard and put that little dimple there but i never noticed until the other day when i did a video i'm like oh right that thing hit more than just my plunger so i'm glad it didn't break my plunger because whatever went through that box hit it super hard you know um but yeah, yeah. That, that happens and, you know, it, it, it sucks. It just sucks because at games, just like Arcade One Up, just like Toy Shock, just like Well Played, they do drop testing, guys. They literally put these things in boxes and drop them from certain heights, like an eight-foot ladder to the floor to test them. They do drop testing. 
But although they get the, these things are everything in this world is not packaged for abuse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all out physical assault. You know what I mean? And we saw, uh, you know, usually I don't, tr I try not to talk about other people, like even like uh, Retro Ralph when he unboxed his Star Wars pinball machine, a forklift drove through and poked a hole through his pinball machine. And that's not RK What Up's fault, right? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, stuff, you know, guys. It happens. So, but the good the good news is, is I've seen maybe less than ten people reporting shipping damage in the forums. What I've seen a lot of is I've seen a lot of happy people. A lot of people are like, "It's big, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it plays well." I've only seen one or two guys say, "Oh, the games suck," or "I don't like the included games." But they always follow it up with, "But I'm going to plug my PC in and play what I want." You know what I mean? So it's like. At Games has that kind of customer. They're like, oh, I don't care what's included because I'm just going to play other. I'm going to play other games via other ways. Jeff Rainwater says when they test them and they fail, it's a flantality. That is absolutely <laughs> true. Yeah, nobody can prepare for the uh, Samsonite gorilla. You know, Rostalja, he won't know what that is. You know, he's too young. And it feels. <laughs> no, I don't. What Samsonite? Yeah, if you Google it, they used to always have. They used to talk about the Samsonite luggage was so strong. Uh, because oh. the handlers at the airport, and they used to have this gorilla take the luggage and be slamming it around in the in the mm -hmm. cage, you know. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm sure we've all had that delivery happen. Like I've had it happen a couple times this last year, where you see like the FedEx truck or the UPS truck pull up in front of your house, and like you're watching from the window. Then you see them start to move your stuff out, and you're like, "No, no, I'll get it." And like, you want to go and stop the guy because you're afraid he's just going to throw it out of the truck, right? Yeah. And so I, did that I mean, exactly. I did that yeah. with, with my pinball, the guy called me because mine had my name on it and phone number yeah. on my on the box, and he called me said, "Hey." I got your box out here, your arcade out here. You want me to put it on the porch? I said, no, I'll come. So he brings me the little one, right, the, the yeah. back glass, and then he goes and grabs the big one by himself, and he doesn't realize how heavy it is. Yeah. And luckily I was there. There's no way he wasn't going to drop that, you know, because he just went and grabbed it and like, oh, and I was like, you want me to help you? He was like, yeah. He's like, I didn't realize how heavy it was. That thing would have slammed to the ground Yeah. because uh, he thought it was lighter than it was. Mm -hmm. And and now, it's, and it's heavier on the back end than it is on the front, so it's 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 you know. Absolutely. Now, uh, yeah. Um, so we can kind of keep flying here because man, I, I just noticed we're already half hour into the show. We got over two hundred people watching, guys. Thanks so much. Time flies by when you're having fun. Let's try and speed things up here for you guys. So, uh, when it comes to um, uh, what I've seen, uh, minus some folks who got some damage. Uh, really, the only negative feedback I've seen is some people are, are voicing concerns over the haptic feedback. Um, either it's too soft or it's too loud. There's definitely options in the setting men settings menus to adjust them. But what I like about the AtGames pinball machine is that obviously with firmware updates and stuff, a lot of this stuff can be perfected. In fact, I think the haptics have already had a couple of tweaks already and some of the firmware since the pinball has been released and AtGames will continue to work on them. I do totally understand, though, because like for right now, um, like for right now, in my opinion, that's probably the weak point of the machine to me is the haptic feedback. Um, after I was so excited, I was excited about the exciters. Right. Uh, but knowing that this is something that can be fixed and all I have to do is wait for the fix and I can download it and it's fixed versus you're stuck with it um, is really exciting to me. Um, minus that, um, I can't think of like anything like no one says the plunger sucks. No one really says the buttons suck. At games always used it uses decent buttons. Um, oh, the back glass. Some people don't like the back glass. I mean, it's 15.6 inches. It's bigger than eight, but some people want like a 20 inch back glass. What do you think about that? Michael B. So yeah, some people are uh, making comments about the way that the black uh, back glass is, and then wow. the actual numbers on it is a little bit small. They're having a hard time seeing those digital displays for the numbers. But I mean, guys, come on! I mean, we got a you know active back glass there. That's a lot cooler than not having it. So I mean, we're, we're just splitting hairs. And like the comments about like uh, the exciters and the comments about like the haptic feedback on all the machines that are coming out. I mean, it's nuts, guys. These aren't four thousand dollar pinball tables. Like they're doing a very cost effective version of this for us. And I, I haven't played any of them yet, so I can't say. But from everything I hear, you're getting pretty good value for your money here. Well, you know, I mean, there were some misses, and I and I understand where they're coming because they they didn't realize you don't you don't need a marquee on a pinball, right? Mm -hmm. So they 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 dedicated that space there, which 
could have allowed the bigger monitor to go there um, if they hadn't. And so, like I say, version two, I think they're going to fix all those things. But uh, as it is, it's still a great table, no doubt about it. And like I said, it's, it's narrowing the gap between that, that starter toy toy mm-hmm. shock and those multi-thousand dollar Veepin tables. Uh, mm-hmm. You see all the things that people are doing with the things that they're bringing into it. People have already added DMDs to these things here as well. You know what I mean? So it's just incredible how quickly this is going to evolve to some very great products uh, out the box and with the mods. Every week, I, I realize that Detroit Love is the smartest man on this panel every week. He says, you're just a genius. That's a great idea, Carl. I'm, I'm definitely I love damn you, man. good looking, though. So. I'm definitely damn <laughs> You know, Mike Caputo, MCAP, who won the Tetris Legends Ultimate Mini on our show on Sunday, has a great idea here. At Games is all about swapping. What if they came out with a swappable back glass that actually had the two screens in it that a lot of people are looking for versus adding their own screen? If At Games sold you guys a swappable back glass, let's just say they charged you 100 bucks. Here's a back glass. It's got two screens, and it's plug-and-play. Versus now they have this big VPX, OCP program. But what that involves is a little bit of extensive modding. You have to buy converter boards. You have to open up the back of your machine and mess around with wires. It's not a plug-and-play experience. But if Ad Games could get you that plug-and-play experience, would you guys be willing? You've already spent six, seven hundred bucks on this thing. Would you spend another hundred bucks on a swappable back glass? If you would, put a one in the chat if you want it. Put a zero. Let me know. Rostalgia, when is the swappable back glass coming out? Break that NDA. I have no information for you. Convert? For real. For real. For real? Well, for real. Well, well, they definitely had already asked in their survey if we want premium tables available, and that's clearly uh-huh. a component of the premium table. Uh, but it would be great if we could buy them, like you said, uh, individually for the people who have the version one table to be able to swap that out that would be fantastic yeah that would be great that would be great all right guys rostal just says we will get a swappable back glass ain't that right my friend for real (laughs) is that is that i'm not telling you anything i have no information for you we'll take his silence as uh, confirmation all right for real with rostalgia right there guys (laughs) for real with nostalgia, Michael B. Look at the little for real ponies right there, man. Those are unicorns. Are, are they just, unicorns? just? Yeah, uh, they have horns. Just in case you're. I saw a ton of, I saw a ton of ones. If anyone from Mac Games is watching this show, guys, we uh, the community would love an easy plug and play solution. They're willing to spend more money. I've seen a lot more ones than zero, guys. And Brad says it is confirmed. All right, there you go. So let's let's hope that happens. Um, I did buy a separate DMD to use, uh, to follow, uh, my, my idol now is, uh, he's in the chat right now. His name is meatball saucy. Mm-hmm. This guy now has four screens on his mm-hmm. back machine, right? So I just got my DMD. It arrived and I'm going to get that mounted inside the back glass, but I'm looking at it like, this is a lot of work, right? This is a lot of work. And I'm like, it'd be so cool if it was just a plug and play experience. Like I would pay more money for a plug and play experience. Go ahead, Michael B. I just want to say, uh, you know, Meatball Saucy, has got four screens in this Legends pinball. Those are rookie numbers, bud. You got to pump those numbers <laughs> up. We need about 14 screens. Come on, work yep. on that. Yep. You know, in, in a month from now, he's going to be like, guys, I got the 14 screen at games, Legends pinball. I'm playing five games at a time. Oh man, that's <laughs> hilarious. That's hilarious. All right, let me find something here. I want to show you guys something kind of cool as we pivot topics away from at games. Um, how many of you guys have been paying attention to our good buddy Jong and the team over at the II Arcade? What, what did he announce this week, uh, Michael B., that was pretty exciting for folks who are interested in the Retromania Wrestling-themed cabinet? The cabinet will now come included with Retromania Wrestling. Retromania Wrestling is going to be included with this purchase, guys. And that was uh, that was something that he had to get done, Right. I mean, if you're going to have a themed cabinet, that game needs to be included with the cabinet. And when they announced that they were coming out with the Retromania version of this cabinet, the game was not included. And this is also supposed to be a limited limited supply, guys. They're, they're only selling it just this one time. This isn't going to be something that they sell all the time. 
So right there is your Retromania cabinet, guys. Let us know what you think of it. I personally think it's sexy. I'm totally, totally jealous of it. And I'm really happy that they got the game included, but there's a little bit of a catch. There's a little bit of a catch, though. The price has gone up. Instead of it being $7.99, it's $8.19. So an extra 20 bucks to get the game included. Now, this game, when it retails on Steam, is $29.99, right? So 30 bucks. So technically, you're saving about 10 bucks. I've seen folks in their community upset over this. They feel like they're getting gypped uh, on the on this game, but they are getting the game, you know, technically a third off. Ret uh, Retrosoft Studios, Mike Herman sacrificed his profit for the game to give you guys the game on the cabinet. Detroit Love, what do you think about this? It, it, are, are people being overly sensitive? I mean, it's 20 bucks. You're already spending 800. You might as well throw in another 20. Am I right? I mean... Well, what do you think? They were, guys? they were already mad at me last week for calling them crybabies, so uh, <laughs> I guess they can, they can continue to. We can call the ambulance uh, this week as well because uh, you know, hell, again, we we're we've gotten quickly spoiled to paying these low prices for these home arcades. People have been paying thousands of dollars for years, and so these prices are considerably lower than any other alternative that we have. So stop crying, man. If the game is being included. You know, you're not even buying this one anyway, so stop all that whining. That's that's what I got to say about it. And uh, bring it on if you got something different to say. Oh, man, look at Detroit Love is throwing the gauntlet down. Wow. What about you, Michael B? What do you think about them doing this for $819? I just want to say that uh, Detroit Love doesn't speak for all the members of the Super Game Room dudes, and those comments have not been reviewed for us before he said those. We love our audience. We don't think that you have said anything negative. Please disregard everything Detroit Love has said. Oh, yeah, man, you're hilarious. You're hilarious. Uh, we got a $2 super chat from Zohar. Let's just round it off to 1000 Why not? Right. Uh, that's pretty funny. Um, guys, if you participated in the Kickstarter, you got a sweet deal on these cabinets. You can't complain. Rostalgia, what are your thoughts here about Retromania? Guys, we're in the game. I mean, that's uh, I, pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I, I either said this in another stream uh, when we talked about this, but I said... I think my exact words were in either increase the price and include the game or just include the game. And they did that. I don't, I don't have any problem at all with them increasing the price uh, to cover the cost of that game. Uh, at the end of the day, these guys are in business to make money. So they've got to do that. And uh, it's got to make, you know, dollars and cents at the end of the day. So I, I don't particularly have an issue. You're getting a discount on the game anyways. And if you really are into the, uh, the theme, it's not a bad value. Yeah, and, and at the end of the day, if you pay eight hundred bucks and crying about twenty dollars more, then uh, you probably should just save your eight hundred bucks to begin with, you know. Um, <laughs> <come on. laughs> Detroit Love showing no mercy tonight. I'm just you saying, be... I'm just saying, yeah. we're not, we're not, we're not talking about going from two hundred dollars to eight hundred dollars because they add a game. We're talking about twenty dollars. Stop, stop. We got anti-social hero here, guys. Uh, Four dollar, five dollars super chat. What's up, Discord fam? He's a big time popular guy over on the at games discord and, and all the discord communities what's up guys um it's a gorgeous so, cabinet. go ahead no you I, go ahead. I just i just want to jump back in there again uh, detroit love is cold as ice but i do want to say uh you know what at least they heard the comments that everybody was disappointed this wasn't going to be included with a retromania themed cabinet and in a very short time period turned around and offered a solution that makes sense for all parties. So you guys get a discounted version of the game at least because you bought that cabinet. So I think that was a pretty good solution from a bad situation in a very short amount of time. So kudos to John and his team for coming up with that. That was technically Rostalgia's idea, but I'm going to give John all the credit. <laughs> Mike Caputo says $10 less than Steam, but the middleman has been cut out. There you go. Well, I mean... I'm going to buy the game, you know, um, Retrosoft studios. They gave me the key. So I, I got it on steam at no cost in order to do live streams. And I have more live streams I need to do for that game. Uh, but when it comes out on I arcade, I am going to shell out the, you know, whether it's 20, 25, 30 bucks, I don't care how much it is. I'm going to buy it because I want to play this game on an arcade machine, right? Uh, natively, not streaming. No offense. We're still just uh, no offense at games, but I want to play it natively. I don't want to stream this game, so I'm super excited about it. 
We got a five dollar super chat from Zohar. Maybe if they had three games, they can sell the cab for twelve hundred. Let's cross our fingers for this discount. <laughs> it's the principle. Come on, be nice, be nice. Um, post the key, P Dubs. No, I can't do that. Um, I haven't seen Ravery. We didn't get in the Kickstarter. 8-Bit Ryan. So, guys, this is a good point about Arcade, and let's be honest about this. The Kickstarter folks, people got these cabinets for, what, five, 600 bucks, and now they're 800 bucks. Excuse me. Is this true, what 8-Bit Ryan is saying? Are we seeing bad reviews from folks? I thought John Riggs, did, did he get his, or did he pay for his? I can't remember. His was a review unit. And, see, here's the thing. I did a review I did a review copy too. Uh, I got a review copy too. People watched mine and they said, I can't trust this because you received the cabinet for review and that's fine. That's your opinion. I told them to go check out Cool Toy. Now, Cool Toy did jump in on the Kickstarter uh, for the bar top, but I mean, what difference does it make of the price Cool Toy paid? Cool Toy presented to you what was included, told you what his thoughts were, not how much the value was for what he got just told you about the piece of equipment you have to then take what he says apply that to your own wants and desires and then decide if the value is there for you it doesn't matter how much somebody paid it matters what information they provide to you if you think that'll fit your criteria and if you think it's worth enough so i mean that's the decision you have to make not how much some of you paid for something mm -hmm. well, wkrp my, go ahead well, michael go ahead. b doesn't speak for all of us <laughs> oh, zing, bazinga! You had to get you back. You had to get you back. WKRP says it was a terrible business decision having the cabinet with the artwork and not including the game. Um, there was also, I mean, John was trying to tell people like something about licensing, changing the included games, um, but they got around it. So technically, yeah, it was a bad decision. I was one of the first people out there saying this game needs to be included on that cabinet if you're going to put the skin on that cabinet. And it's done. It's included now, guys. So, I mean, we can't we can't knock them anymore because um, that's not the situation anymore, right? Um, Sailor says interested, but just not 800 interested. But let me ask you something, Sailor. Do you plan on buying two arcade one-up machines this year? Are you eight hundred to a thousand dollars interested in two arcade one-up machines? Then you might be eight hundred dollars interested in the arcade. I mean, it's basically the cost of one and a half arcade one-up cabinets. Let's put it in perspective, guys. We're spending now five hundred dollars a cabinet on arcade one-up cabinets, and per arcade one-up, the prices are going to continue to go up. They're going to go higher due to parts shortages and issues going on overseas. So these cabinets are not going to be $300 anymore or $399 anymore. These cabinets are going to be $500 plus moving forward, guys. And if you're willing to buy two arcade one-up machines and spend $1,000 for a good arcade experience, it sounds like you might be willing to spend $800 on an iArcade. Ristalgia, right. do you think I'm off my rocker? Yes, but okay. not for the point that you just said. Fair enough. <laughs> well, and, go ahead. And, and the $800 iArcade cabinet is going to have more games out the box than those two uh those two right uh, rk one-up cabinets and you have the ability to add more games as they come out as we will be buying this wrestling game for our cabinets um and, and another example when we're talking about the price things going up you know the the marvel and the star wars pinball that rk one to come up i i have a pre-order for the uh, attack from mars which is 50 bucks more than what People are paying for those same two cabinets. So, you know what I mean? A am I whining about that? No, but uh, I don't whine, yep. apparently. Yep, we and, got a lot. Go ahead. Well, we and, got a lot. What? And the II Arcade is a lot of the things about it are more premium. It's got a more premium feel to it. The controls are better. The screen's bigger. So, I mean, I know it's more money, but you're getting a more premium product. I tried to emphasize that in the review that I put out. And, and I'd just like to say that Detroit Love and Michael B. the Game Genie do not speak on behalf of all Super Game Room dudes. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just stirring the pot. We got well over 200 people watching. Thanks so much, guys. Zohar, $5. It's like making an arcade one-up machine with a Mortal Kombat theme and having Paperboy on it. No Mortal Kombat 3. No Mortal Kombat 4. Oh, wait. That exists. Never mind. Um, time will tell with iArcade. I think a lot of people still, still, Despite the fact he's got a couple hundred games licensed, despite the fact that, guys, this is probably one of the best built arcade machines you'll buy in this niche market and price range and experience and sound, 
he doesn't have the games that appeal to everybody, right? So time yeah. will tell. If he can get more games, like Retro, like Retromania was huge. Dead Cells was huge. Um, what else was huge, guys? Uh, Dragon's Lair, Double Dragon. If he can keep bringing the, the ones that bring shock value to him, like, oh, my God, that's on there? I'm buying that day one, right? I think a lot of the folks in our live chat who are saying, I'm not spending 800 bucks until he has the games I want. Those people might then eventually decide to buy an arcade. And guys, it's totally fair of you. I support you 100% viewers. If they're, the games aren't what you want to play, don't spend the $800. Absolutely. What now, I'd just say, like right? to say that uh, P-Dubs, uh, he does not, his comments do not represent what all of us at the Super Gamer do <laughs> believe. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying that every time one of us talks. Oh, yeah. Come on. I believe so. so I, 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 I want to take a minute. I want to take a minute and just... This has been a little too tense for my liking. I don't really like when stuff goes in this direction. So let's take a moment. Carl has a new t-shirt. And if I dare do say, he's looking pretty swole. Show off yourself, Carl. Show everybody. Yeah, Look at that. Is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 10, pounds pounds of gold. Gold. 10 pounds of gold. 10 pounds of gold. There you go. Yeah, this shirt, yeah. Is, was, is, this shirt has made me bitter today. I'm just in the rest. I'm in a fighting mood. So don't blame it on me. <laughs> Don't blame it on me, you know. Well, here, this, I'm going, this I'm cheer, going retro, baby. This will cheer you up, guys. Uh, Rostalgia recently took a trip to the Arcade One Up headquarters. And Rostalgia, I want you to tell us about your trip. Was it fantastic <laughs> when you were at the Arcade One Up headquarters? Um, how was it? What did you experience? What did you see there? What new cabinets are coming? What do you got for us, buddy? Uh, well, I, um, yeah, <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> I'm not sure where to go with this one. Um, yeah, no, I, there's lots of this wonderful is stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm not very good at this. Uh, they had lots of wonderful stuff, like a really bad Mortal Kombat cabinet coming out. Um, some, uh, some interesting, uh, some interesting new machines, maybe that they're gonna, they're gonna talk about at E3. I don't know. Lots yeah. of good stuff. Yep. Well, uh, we can't wait for you to spill the beans for us, buddy. We're we're on the edge of our seat. We can't wait to find out what's coming down the pipeline. And now let's pivot over and let's talk about Arcade One Up, guys. So Arcade One Up, let's see what's going on in the world of Arcade One Up. Oh, I got something really cool, something really positive for everybody. Arcade One Up did something, and I didn't even know this was going on until today, guys, um, because I can't follow everything, every little thing that all these companies do. And you call yourself uh, a YouTuber. Well, I can't cover everything. That Whatever, I'll dude. Excuses. But Arcade 1UP did something really cool. Guys, as you guys know, I give Arcade 1UP a hard time a lot. Uh, but that's because they give me a hard time, right? If they didn't give me a hard time, I wouldn't give them a hard time. But they did do something that was really, really cool. And they're doing this uh, design contest, design your own cabinet contest. And I personally thought it was a great way to have community engagement, guys. And let's take a look and let's talk about what some... <laughs> What? Your wow. mic just blew up. Whoa. That was intense. You guys okay? Yeah, no, my ears aren't, but everything else is fine. Ow, All right, my freaking ears. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's take a look here. So, for instance, um, I thought this was really cool. I want to share these pictures. These are custom arcade designs that uh, our community members had made. They submitted to Arcade One Up. I think. If they win the votes, what happens? The arcade one up will actually make this for them. Is that what's happening? Do you guys know? Well, I know the, or, the, they get to the pick from the yeah. uh, cabinets they have in stock. If they win, I don't know what they actually do. With the oh, game. yeah. So my understanding was the winner gets to pick between like one of the thirty thousand Pac Man cabinets that they have. Oh, one of the thirty thousand Pac Man cabinets. Oh, but look at that, guys. That's pretty cool, don't you think? Like, look at that. You don't like that one? Don't worry, we have more. We have more. I thought this one was pretty cool. Let's pull up the let's pull up the let's pull up the next one here. So let's take a look at this one. This one's really cool. Oh, I missed it. Uh, Dragon just, Fire. Just hit that arrow next time, just so you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that, guys. Dragon Fire. What do you guys think of this one? The I the, I read the comments, and the guy who drew this said, uh, "I wanted to create my own game, a game that would make me want to step up and play an arcade machine, right?" So this was his vision, Dragonfire. Obviously, he's inspired by a lot of R, what is that, RPG type games or uh, you know stuff like Golden Axe and things. This looks really cool. Come on, Michael B. I, I figured this would be right up your alley. 
I can I can say that these things. I was curious when I saw that template. And I'm thinking, what 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 are people going to draw? What are people going to put on this thing here? That's going to be appealing for for just a cabinet. I guess a a, a main what we, a main cabinet, right? Because they clearly not going to call that a Pac-Man cabinet, right? So I, I think these are pretty good uh, starts. These these actually yeah. looks pretty nice. And, yeah, I gotta say, I mean, these are community generated. They are. There's yeah. no IP that we're all linked to, right. or that we have an emotional attachment. There's, they're pretty. They look pretty good. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely. You got to give kudos to the designers who put these out there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give a shout out to those of us in the community who drew these. You guys are way better artists than I could ever hope to be, and I just thought this was really, really cool. A, a cool little thing that Arcade One Up did. I could say something Arcade One Up did was cool. I think this was cool. Look at this Arcade of the Future, guys. Look at that. Come on, that's pretty dope looking. And I think mm -hmm. we just have a couple more. We got the Fight for Love Arcade One Up. This one's inspired by all kinds of stuff here. Let's take a look. I'm actually impressed with these. These are these are pretty nice looking. I mean, let's let's look at it from this standpoint. When uh, IRK was coming out. They didn't mm -hmm. have any IP initially, right? They just had that, uh, mm -hmm. whatever that color. It was initially white, and then they made this other design. But that's where this is looked like this is targeting, where, where we're not using IP. We're making, coming up with a, a different design that's going to appeal to people. And I think it's a it's a good idea because everybody, you know, while the man below me can't buy anything unless it looks like something he had from his childhood, some people are interested in different designs. You know what I mean? So Hey, Mike, uh, he's talking about you. Just yeah, in case you, know. you were wondering. Yeah. Well, he, he he's always below me, so you know he is. Oh man, it you has, guys are really picking it out the show. It has it has to be him, right? I'm just right. saying, Mike. You you like it to be authentic. You like it to look like you know the cabinets you recall from your past, and other people like the IRK IRK random design that uh, yeah. is a little more retro, a little more modern, and so I can see why they're trying to go in that area and see if they can find some appeal. Uh, for those people who, because because granted, us people mm -hmm. that remember Pac-Man cabinets and all that stuff, we're we're getting older, right? The new people, mm -hmm. if you're going to introduce them to arcade cabinets, you're going to have to find some way for them to walk up to that, and because they don't have that memory, the nostalgia mm -hmm. to tie them and draw them to it. So what's going to draw them to them? So I think it's a good idea. All right, guys. So we have an option now to keep the show moving here. We could either hop into and start talking about Arcade One Up Pinball Machines and our reactions and the community reactions, or we could play my Arcade One Up game that I designed for tonight's episode. It's a fun game. Shouldn't take too long to play. Um, in the audience, do you guys want to talk pinball or play a game? Throw it in the live chat. And while we wait for them to vote, Rostalgia, what do you want, man? Do you want to play? You want to talk pinball or do you want to play a game? Man, I don't know what you have up your sleeves. I I don't want to say one way or another because I fall into traps very easily. So I will uh, just uh, defer this over to uh, Mr. Michael B. Michael B. I, I really don't want to rain on your game that you want to play. Uh, I think most people want to see game. I want to talk pinball. Can we just do both? Like that's always my answer. Like people are like, oh, which <laughs> pinball are you going to get? Are you going to buy at games or arcade one up? My answer is both, man. So let's do both. Let's just do, do a three hour show. We're gonna do both, but I'm we need bad. to. I'm just trying to figure out which one we should do next. What does the game. audience want to game. choose? Your Look adventure. like saying the game is the yeah. All right, all right, guys. We got, we got some people saying both as well from Mike. All right, we're gonna talk arcade one up pinball. We got a lot to say about it, so let's yeah, let's get the game out of the way first. Let's because we want to make sure we get that in today's show. All right, guys. So here's the game is a, a certain member of our arcade and gaming community has gone missing and uh he's been uh, missing no. he's been missing for weeks guys we don't know where he is um however i think he's been spotted um we need your help as well as everyone's on the panel's help here in finding him that's right guys in tonight's episode of super gamer dudes we are going to play where's john d <laughs> and we're going to play it right now so what i have here for you guys is i have a photo here for you guys i think you guys are really going to enjoy and we're going to go full screen for you guys and we're going to zoom in john d is somewhere in this photo and we are going to find him guys he's around here somewhere and there's a lot of surprises inside this photo so let's kind of start zooming in 
Let's see if we can find him. Let me get to the like top left corner and we can kind of work our way over. All right, guys. So if anyone in the live chat, if you see John D, make sure you shout it out and say where he's at or if you see anything really cool. But guys, we got to find him. He's missing. He's He's been gone for too long. He's I just saw Legends here. Pinball. You saw Legends Pinball? Yes, sir. Right there? Yep. Who's who's playing the Legends Pinball? I'll let you chew on that. <laughs> I know who it is. <laughs> tech, tech buzz. No, it's uh, it's not. Look no. at the hairstyle. <laughs> Long hair, hasn't showered. Who is that? <laughs> Let's not say his name. But that's somebody playing Legends Pinball. Let's see here. Uh, he might he might be a uh, work for a, a competing studio. Rexer, look. Oh, look, it's the Rexer show. The Rexer show's in here. <laughs> All right. Where oh, are I you, see John? me. I see me. Where are you? <laughs> right up there with the flan. <laughs> oh, oh, look yeah. at that. There's Michael B. <laughs> Fantastic, baby. Fantastic. All right, guys. If you guys see John D, shout it out. We got to fight him. He's been missing. For too long. That Waldo guy kind of looks like David McIntosh. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. There's a uh, hey! <laughs> real. <laughs> Wait a minute, who's this? What's this? <laughs> Zohar, I miss John D. He's always been good to me. John D needs to come back. John D needs to come back. All right, so let's see here. John D, we want you to come back, my friend. You need to come back. All right. Let's see here. Oh, look, oh, there's, there's this there's guy. Dubs, there's the dubs. P, P dubs is at the flan stand. All right. Oh, man. Where is John D, guys? We got to find him. He's got to be around here somewhere. If you see anything cool, let me know. Oh, look, here's an arcade one up booth. That's pretty cool. We got that in there. Added a whole bunch of stuff. There's the Wizard of Oz guys. He's in here somewhere. Where are you at, John D? Where are you at? Oh, there's there. Detroit Love. Right. Where's Detroit Love? Our left. Now oh, look at that. There, there he is. There's Detroit Love, everybody. Detroit Taking Love. Taking a photo. Well, yeah, because he says he's so sexy, right? He's so <laughs> sexy. <laughs> Oh, that looks like Marty McFly right there, and that looks like the time machine uh, from Doctor Who, right? Oh, man. John D. is nowhere hey, to Reptar. be found. John D. is nowhere to be found, guys. Where is there's, he? There's, uh, there's, uh, there's the Retro Buzz. Buzz. And John. Oh, oh, look, guys. It's the Retro Buzz. They, they are in here. All right. There's the Retro Buzz. Oh, there's John. There's the I Arcade. All right. Maybe... Maybe John D is close. We got to find him. I know he's in here somewhere. I just don't know where. Let's see here. There's the three amigos. Remember the three amigos salute? Nah, Rostalgia's too young for that movie. Yeah. We got Star Trek. Closed due to our booth being stolen. Let's see here. Stay puff ET guys, keep shouting out the cool things you see. Throw them in the chat and let me know if you find John D. You got Loki, you got the Hulk. Let's see here. I know he's in here. This is kind of fun. We should be hey, able to the rapper. Oh, yeah, you see that kick punch. It's all in the mind. If you want to test me, I'm sure you'll find the things will teach you a sure to beat you, but nevertheless, you get a lesson from teacher now. <laughs> Keep going, Mike. I don't know the rest. Right. I see him. There he is. What? Oh yeah, there right he there. is, right here. Where's who's where? What you He's see? Right next, to, right next to John yeah. Riggs. There. Wait, what? Yeah, next to that black wall there on the left. Over here. Yeah, yeah. right there. Right there. Up. Wait, wait, wait. Is that him? Did yeah. we find him? Oh, there he is, guys. We found John D. There he is. He's right there. All He's right, back, baby. He's back. John D is back. We found John D. John D can now come out of hiding, guys. That was pretty fun, in my opinion. Wasn't that fun? That was kind of fun, wasn't it? That was cute. That was cute. That was, that was adorable. <laughs> something different. A little something different. All right, guys. We found John D. John D, get off your sabbatical. Come on back and answer all these questions from the community on your fan pages. I did. Look, I do want to point out that you had to put your glasses on to find them, though. So. Yeah, I did. I did. Now I can take them back <laughs> off. And now... 
we're going to get to the moment that Michael B has been waiting for. As you guys know, out of everyone on this panel, probably the biggest fan of Hit One Up is Michael B, the game genie. Michael B, tell us all the good news about your pinball machines. You've been you wanted to tell everyone. Go ahead. So uh, I got a notification on when was it Thursday that my Attack from Mars RK One Up pinball has been shipped. It's saying that the latest I should receive it is the 16th. I've got a feeling I might even get it earlier. So Attack from Mars is on the way. I also got a notification today that my Marvel pinball is also on the way and should be here by the latest of the 17th, both of which I only bought the day before I got the notifications. I, I have pre-orders in at other places, but Walmart shipped first. You pre-order and like the next day your stuff ships and the rest of the gaming community is still waiting for their stuff. And maybe it's because you have a, you're a YouTuber. You're spoiled. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. Walmart Canada really cares about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Michael B, you have potential to be the first YouTuber that's actually within our gaming community to get some videos out on that cabinet. I hope you go live the minute you get it. I might play Super Nintendo. We'll see. <laughs> How about that, nostalgia? <laughs> I'll take it. That's fun. <laughs> look at this, look at red, red attack for mirrors in Marvel pinball. Say, say Marvel pinball. Say Marvel. Marvel pinball. <laughs> you do say it funny. Say it again. He even says arcade one up. Uh... Marvel pinball. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so you're getting yours, and um, nostalgia. You have the Star Wars one, right? I do, and the Marvel one. And you have the Marvel one. They're in your house today. I have the Marvel one. Detroit Love, do you have any of them or any of them on the way? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, Rostalgia. I have a your... pre-order with no date, okay, for my uh, Attack from Mars pinball. Okay, and Rostalgia, what are your thoughts? And uh, uh, have you assembled both of them? Have you played both of them? What do you, what do you got for us? Uh, I have assembled Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And it looks good. But what does it, it smell like? I it didn't, looks I didn't smell it. Uh, it looks it looks nice. It looks nice. Visually, it looks nice. Uh, I'm pretty hard on these sort of things. Uh, I, I did a deep like a deep dive into this thing. I took the whole thing apart. I, I ripped out the the motherboard or the uh, the PCB. I took the heat sink off of it because I wanted to know kind of what the uh, the SOC was in there. Um, there, there's uh, there's some quirks to the machine. It's it's. I wish it wasn't so expensive in Canada. I yeah. wish it wasn't so expensive in Canada. I mean, by the time you know it's shipping and everything is all said and done, it's it's like a thousand bucks. So, I think that kind of weighs a little bit on my decision making process in terms of like, what my thoughts are. Um, there were certain aspects that they should have improved prior to launch. Um, there are certain things that they said they couldn't do that they, I think, know that I know some of the information that I think they probably could have done. Um, and I think that there's room for improvement yeah. without, without trying to be super negative. I think that there is, there's some but, room for improvement. But I'm going to play devil's advocate here. There's room for improvement on the toy shock. There's room for, for improvement on the well play. There's room for improvement on the at games legends pinball. It's just easier to get a lot of those improvements in if your machine is internet connected, right? And that way, uh, if it, especially if it's a software thing, right, that just needs a uh, push through. Um, obviously, a lot of hardware stuff, it kind of is what it is. Like, if you don't like the legs on the pinball machine, they're not going to redesign new legs and sell them to you, you know, or, or put them out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get it for free, right? It's mostly software and feature updates. So not everything can be fixed via a firmware update. Mm -hmm. But there's always opportunities for improvement on all these devices. Uh, the Marvel Pinball Machine is a fun play. Um, I had a great moment when I unwrapped it, put it together, and I even posted the video. I wanted my live reaction for the entire 16,000 arcade one-up fans out there who claim I'm an At Games employee when I'm not. I wanted my live reaction out there. And sure enough, I, I peeled the plastic, I turned it on, and I'm like, okay, that lights up really good. And then what happened? Boom. That music kicks in, and they have it set to go really loud, right? That Avengers fight music, right? And that just filled me with joy, right? The minute I turned the machine on, right? You know, and then I played it. 
<laughs> but then again, you know, that moment there was what it's like. That's what you're waiting for, guys, right? Like the Star Wars pinball machine. You guys have been waiting a year for this thing. And when you peel the plastic, you put the legs on, you turn on the on switch and you hear that Star Wars theme and see that crawl. I mean, that that gets you all fired up. Right. But you want the experience to continue. Um, obviously, those of us who've played a lot of virtual pinball pro are discovering a lot of things about the arcade one up pinball that we're not fans of. And unfortunately, there's really no way to fix it. Right. Um, you know, if the if we don't like the screen, it's not like they can send out, you know, a Wi-Fi update. I mean, they do have the capability, though. There's a micro USB on there. They could do the firmware updates via USB. Rostalgia, do you see them doing that on these machines? Or do you think they'll just keep it as is until, you know, um, the next version come out? Uh, it's tough to say. I mean, they can they can do a firmware update on this machine. It wouldn't be difficult. And if you are familiar with the process of reflashing firmware, it's not mm -hmm. incredibly difficult. But um, mm -hmm. I think that there's certainly a lot of things that they could do uh, in a firmware uh, update, but I don't think that they will. I think that it is at least from their perspective, good enough. And I think that uh, you're going to just have to either take it as it is or leave it sort of thing. Yep. Well, I, I would disagree only to the fact that because Zen is involved with it as well, Zen may not like the rep that it's getting from any bugs or issues that come. So they may push them to say, hey, we, we can release a fix to fix certain things. So I think that element a lens to that possibility versus if it was a pac-man or if it was a different one where those people's ip people don't really have any current stake in that machine working any better so i think that mm -hmm. if it's going to happen that's probably going to be the the card to play i mean i think they might i mean um i mean they've done it on their pac-man units these machines are very very important to their lineup this year like the so I, I think they will do firmware updates and patches and things. It just involves, it's not going to be an easy process for us as owners. You're going to have to unscrew, um, you're going to have to unscrew the lock, the, the lock bar and the side rails, and then you're going to have to unscrew the bezel, then lift everything up to access the PCB. I don't know if you can get in through the back of the machine yet. I have to go yeah, take you a look. You, you can. can't get, to, can you get to the PCB through the back? Yep. If that's the case, that would be great, right? Mm -hmm. That would be great. Um, but still, it's still like you have to haul your computer to your pinball machine or your pinball machine to your computer. You know what I mean? I just I just like Wi-Fi. You know what I mean? I do see Arcade 1UP doing updates uh, where they can on this machine. It's just not going to be an easy, easy thing. Um, they definitely need to do something about the brightness and coloring, um, in my yeah, opinion. The monitor is pretty washed out. The monitor is very washed out. Um, a lot of the reds look pink. You know what I mean? And um, and that's kind of a shame. Um, but the ball looks great. Uh, you turn the ball trails off. Um, that ball actually looks like it's rolling. You know what I mean? It has kind of the same effect to it that the Magic Pixel Balls do and what Zen does on their other platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, they got the 60 frames per section. second. No flipper delay. It's a good experience. I think a lot – I think folks – like the general arcade one up fan is going to love these machines. In fact, they do. They got 16,000 people. They got hundreds of them on their fan pages who are saying, this is amazing. It's beautiful. I'm so happy with it. Right. But then again, they do have a good number of their fans who are opening those boxes and saying, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. You know what I mean? I, I feel, I don't think it's good enough. I've seen, I've seen a lot of posts about um, the screens, especially the monitor as well as the DMD, not using the full DMD. Um, and then they're saying, yeah, it's got solenoids, but the solenoids aren't that strong. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't really feel them. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, I looked at them. They're, they don't have any, like, manufacturer's mark on them, so I don't know what the quality is because you can't even look them up. Um, but I, it's important to note, I've had mine open for about a week, and after about, I don't know, 30 minutes of play, I noticed that... Uh, the solenoid where the right flipper is or the one that replicates that feeling is starting to go on mine already. So I think that uh, I've already got a feeling solenoid on one of my, or one of the four solenoids is starting to go on mine already. Are you serious already? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've got, I'm able to, uh, I'm going to do it in my review video, but I've got, 
I've got some footage showing like, okay, I'm going to show you all three of the other solenoids. And then when you listen to the, the last one, you're going to say, oh yeah, something's definitely wrong with that one. And I've taken it apart to make sure it was mechanically moving in the right direction, but I just think it's, it's not going to last very much longer. Yeah. <coughs> Michael B, you've been awfully quiet and you've got kind of a frown on your face. Are you sad to hear all this? No, I, I was sad. Like I, I talked to you guys about this last week. Uh, so many people got their arcade one-off pinballs, and we were talking about it. And I'm so excited about it. And everybody was pretty negative about it, so it kind of, uh, you know, put me in a little bit of a glum mood because I've been really looking forward to it. But I countered that by buying a second table. So you know, everything works <laughs> out. <laughs> you're like, you know what? Everyone hates it. Well, not everyone. I'm exaggerating, but you're like. Everyone hates it. I'm going to buy two. <laughs> well, uh, to, be, to be fair, I talked to Nostalgia about it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I went and played. Um, I've been very critical of the Arcade 1-Up Pinball outside of the Bally Williams table, the Attack from Mars. I was like, this is all video game pinball. I don't know why anybody would want to pick it up. It doesn't fit their motif. But mm -hmm. I, I wanted to give it a chance. So I downloaded them on my computer and I started playing them and I realized how fun it was. And then my daughter came in, she sat down and she played with me a little bit and she was like, I love Wolverine. I love Spider-Man. And we were having a lot of fun. And I was like, that cabinet does look good. I've got wicked FOMO. I want to buy that too. And the option came up with Walmart that I could buy it and it would be here in like 10 days. So yeah, I went in and bought it and I'm still really excited. I, I've, been on YouTube a very, very long time. I've talked about NES games that have terrible graphics, but you know what? If it feels good to play, sometimes that's all that matters. So I'm excited to try it out. I, I hear everything everybody's saying about the screen, but I've gotta I gotta try it out for myself. And I bought it from Walmart, so worst case scenario, I'll just return it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we I, get we're I getting have, a little I have mixed little... feelings on 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 it just from a modding standpoint because I like to mod them but I actually bought the uh, Attack from Mars to not mod it. And, but, I, but I do like to see what uh, Kongs R Us and what Cool Toy has done uh, to yeah. mod them. And I, 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 I want to get pulled into that, but I don't want to mod it. So I'm kind of I'm, I'm at an at a, uh, impasse here, and I have to decide which route I'm going to go with that. Mm -hmm. Got a comment here from Farrell saying that we're, uh, it seemed like he felt like we were predominantly always negative. And actually, sir, that's not true. You must not watch our channels or our show. Um, we've pointed out during this show several opportunities for improvement for both At Games and I Arcade. We're definitely not showing any bias. We're having a grown-up, mature discussion about these Arcade 1-Up pinball machines and opportunities there. What's good? What's bad? I mean, we kicked off with the, with the discussion that there are a lot of people out there who are super happy with them. Let's not forget that. The average Arcade 1-Up fan is going to love these, and that's already been proven if you take a look at their fan forums. I think folks that have a little more virtual pinball experience and knowledge are going to be a little more disappointed in these products because they're going to expect a little bit more that they feel Zen didn't deliver on. And there's nothing wrong with providing that kind of feedback. That kind of feedback will help Zen make a better experience on the next wave of pinball machines because this these aren't going to be the only three right guys we're going to see more we're going to see more yeah. pinball machines from them yep. and they might go bigger screens in the back glass they might put a better spring in the solenoids they might they might put more than 10 games on the machine they might say you know what we're not going to release this thing unless it's 1080p and if it's not for this kind of feedback and these kind of shows that's not going to happen you know what i'm saying michael and, and b would you agree with me well, I just want to point out, or Carl. No matter what, no matter what level you at, once you get exposed to the, the V pin, the digital pinball, you're going to want more. So it's the yeah. we call it the it's oh, yeah. the gateway. Whatever one you buy is the gateway. You're going to want to expand. You're going to want to get different ones. You're going to want to do something different. Period. That's just from a fan, but from the manufacturers, is a gateway to them because they're just these are all new products into the market, and they're only going to get better from here. So. Uh, mm -hmm. if you're not excited now, you're going to be excited, excited later without a doubt, because it, this thing is just getting started. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just delighted to where it's, where it's going to head and it's going to go pretty quickly too and, and expand and get better. So I'm, I'm thrilled, man. Yep. Dylan's got a great point. They could, well, it doesn't matter what it puts out. If it's got the arcade one up brand on it, it's going to sell. That makes a lot of sense right here. So that's true. They have been, they have built a definite, um, what do you call it? 
very loyal fan base. You know, I mean, you know, those out of those 16 to 20,000 people in their groups, you know, they're going to they're going to buy, you know, hundreds of these pinball machines. Right. And the, re- and the reality is mm-hmm. uh, any of these stores, no matter what name is on the pinball, if they if they can get them on the shelves, they're going to mm-hmm. sell, period. Whatever it is, they're going to sell. We got to get more available, you know, to the to the retail, period, no matter who's making them. Yep. Moondog. We criticize because we care. That's exactly what we're doing. Just like the At Games Pinball has. Op- Think about it this way, guys. The At Games Pinball hasn't even finished shipping wave one, right? And they've already been talking, hinting, rumoring, taking surveys. And the At Games community themselves have spoken and said, although this pinball machine looks great and is great, we want an even better pinball machine, right? Now they want the deluxe pinball machine. We're hoping this fall at games announces a deluxe model with like a 40 inch screen, right? 4k, like uh, who knows what they're talking about. It's getting nuts. Go ahead, Michael B. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, Ristalja, you must be too, because Canada is right around the corner for our at games pinball. Uh, I've got a date of April 8th when I'm going to get my at games pinball and I can't wait. Like I'm so excited to play these games that I've been playing on my legends gamer pro Non-stop on an actual pinball table very soon. Yep. Yep. So I think, you know, I, I did order both. I ordered the Marvel and the Star Wars, and that's because I'm such a huge fan of both of those franchises. Um, and um, and I do like playing those games on Zen on my PC, on my Xbox. I predominantly play uh, a Pinball FX3 on Steam. So, of course, when I walked in going, you know, when I first started playing this these tables, I was like, you know what? I play these all the time on Steam and on Xbox. I know these are just basically Android optimized ports. Don't get too upset. Uh, I'm not upset about the gameplay or that experience with the flippers and stuff. And actually, the solenoids, I mean, they're clack, they're clicky clacky, but it's not like as bang, bang, bang. You know what I mean? But what I'm upset about is just the screen. That's it. Like the colors on the screen. Like that's my, my, that's my big thing. You know, maybe if it was a 27 inch monitor, it was 1080p. I probably would be a lot happier. What do you think, Michael B? Uh, Well, let's be clear about this. There's nothing wrong with that screen. The screen is 1080p. The screen is really good. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they were putting the game in 1080p, we know that the monitor is capable of it. Yeah. So, Uh, so the, the thing about the pinball from what I understand is I explained it on my live chat I did there the other day. Sometimes they put games on the Switch that are really PS4 games, and they have to do some kind of backward scaling on them to make them work on the uh, Nintendo Switch compared because they're really a PS4 game. They shouldn't work. I'm kind of getting the impression that that I, I can't remember. Cool Toy actually knew the word exactly that I was trying to get across, and I can't remember it now, but it's a process where they basically bring it down to make it work on the hardware, which will cause like some of the graphical issues that we're seeing with it. I think that's what we're experiencing. There's nothing wrong with the screen. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you know what I mean. Like the games, if the games were on a 27-inch screen being broadcast at 1080p, might be a, like, that's like, wow, it's 27 inch. It's bigger than the toy shock. It's bigger than well played. Not as big as the at games, but you know, that would be a huge selling point to them. Right. You know, plus if they, you know, uh, I don't know if there's any way they can do the DMD a little bit better. You know what I mean? Well, there's there's a lot of wasted space in that DMD. Yeah. Well, devil again, wall- the DMD is fine. Cause on, in the Maz, they reuse those and they're using full screen. It's just the way they chose to display that DMD on that on that screen is the issue. Yeah, I've got Devil Waldo asking me a question in there, and I think it was related to screen size. Do you believe the 24 inch is large enough? And if you had nothing to compare it to, is it truly good enough? Real opinions, please. I do have nothing to compare it to. I do not have a Legends pinball machine. Do not have any other uh, pinball machines. Um, personal personal opinion, right out of the box, it was fine. It was fine. You're standing close enough to it that 24 inches isn't like crazy small. You're not having to squint to look at the screen. Um, I'm less, I'm less, I have less of a problem with the, uh, the size of the screen as I do with the, uh, the quality of the assets in the 720p resolution. I think that, uh, that, that is what leaves something to be desired because they, they, they took what are really nice assets. Mm-hmm. And they had to compress them and drop the quality heavily on them in order to get them to run on that hardware 
Mm -hmm. um, although my personal opinion is that they could have done a much better job optimizing that chipset for what they were doing. Um, they did what they did and you end up with kind of a very pixelated, um, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like you're looking at 720p HD 60 frames, the 60 frames for sure. But it doesn't, it, although it's outputting 720p, it doesn't feel like it's actually like a 720p resolution. So that's, that's kind of my gripe with, uh, with the screen and the, the colors, they're just really, really washed out. And, uh, that on its own, they should have optimized the screen. They could have fixed the the contrast resolution on the screen before they shipped that thing. There's there's no excuse for that. That was just yeah. poor a uh, poor decision. Yeah, and I'll echo that. You know, I've I've had my modified cabinet uh, for uh, over a year now, and yeah. and been enjoying that. Like like Ristal just said, once you're focusing on the screen, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I have the 32 inch now. The 32 inch definitely is better. Uh, but I answered this question in one of my streams the other day. I, I, I said if I had if I had a bigger screen with a less quality product or a smaller screen with a better quality product, you know, I'm gonna pick the smaller screen with a with a better product, quality product. Um, and likewise, if I have the haptic feedback, which I love now, now to have it, I hadn't had it for a year. Now I have it. Now I want to have that. You know what I mean? Uh, so your your desires and your needs change as you play these things because you learn more about it, and now you get exposed to these things. So, um, the the again, I've said it countless times. No matter which one of these cabinets you get, you're going to have a ball with it, and you're going to want another one. So I don't think you should be focusing so much. Uh, on uh, which exactly one, but get which one you really like, get which one that uh, resonates with you, and you're going to be adding another one to it, no doubt, in my in my book. Real quick plug, guys. Uh, Original Console Gamer is here. I actually just started watching his channel this week. I just recently discovered him myself. Um, newer guy, smaller channel, but guys, do me a favor. Go check out his channel. Watch a couple of his videos. If you like what you see in here, click that subscribe button. Um, I did enjoy his commentary on a lot of his videos. Uh, I'm becoming a fan and I subscribed as well. So guys, go check out Original Console Gamer. What's really exciting, hold on, Michael B. What's really exciting about this niche community is all these new content creators we're seeing, right? Like, I mean, I wasn't here, you know, a year and a half ago. Like I got in here because of these arcades and all that kind of stuff and seeing more and more new guys coming in with more and more opinions is really exciting to me. We definitely want to support these folks. Um, the more opinions, the better. You know what I mean? You shouldn't just listen to one person. Um, so that's really, really cool. Go ahead, Michael B. Yeah, I just wanted to echo what you're saying right now. Uh, I've watched a lot of original console gamers coverage of the arcade one-up pinball tables because I'm thirsty. I want it. So <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought he did a really good job of being extremely fair with how the table worked, his feelings on it, how it played. So, guys, it's a really honest, good look at the table from my experience. So uh, go check out his content and make your own decisions. I can't wait to get to try this for myself so mm -hmm. I can take everything I've heard and compare it to what I expect. I'm probably going to love it because everybody's kind of been saying this, this, and this. So I'm, I'm probably going to be very overwhelmed when I see it in person. I think, I think Mike, too, you've got the advantage of hearing all of the, uh, the bad stuff. Everyone yeah. before these things came out, it was just good stuff. And this product was being hyped up by Arcade One Up a lot. Um, and then everyone had super high expectations and then it came and reality kind of sunk in and then it kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth but you've got the advantage of like hearing everything and coming at this thing without those high expectations so you're probably going to have a better unboxing experience and first time turning this thing on than the uh the people who are kind of in the first lineup to receive this machine yeah well also guys uh, i don't need anybody else to tell me anything else negative about it because i don't need to buy a third one and that'll happen if you keep putting it down so let's all go easy on mike b's wallet <laughs> well you have don't you have star wars i thought you had all three coming no no uh just afm and marvel yes for now for now for now look yeah, at it i'll send you that link later for now I got, a, I got a guy i got a guy he'll he can get one to you no problem Excellent. for now Excellent. um well, I do plan on keeping mine um, because let's be honest, guys, if there's one thing Arcade 1-Up does is design a beautiful looking cabinet, right? 
Um, and whether I decide to keep it the same or tweak it, modify it, I mean, that's that's my right as an owner. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I mean, I think. I mean, I think there. I don't know. I just feel like the. If it wasn't for the screen, you would have seen P Dubs join in the bandwagon mm -hmm. of everything is amazing. Go buy this product, right? You know what I mean? Like, there's so much about this product that I do like. Um, but there's a but you know the parts that are kind of ruining it for me are big pieces of the puzzle, right? Big pieces of the puzzle. So, go ahead. Yeah, but a lot of people complain about the you know the original screens on these. Uh, these cabinets behind me and they even make them bigger I, i've never they're washed out they're white from different <laughs> angles uh i've never had a, a a need or desire to make them larger on the regular arcade one of cabinets and and i've lived with them being washed out i still enjoy them so that's just the reality of it as well and, and to be fair i mean arcade one up they make really nice looking machines mm -hmm. that's it's like their number one thing they make a lot of really dumb mistakes they they mess up button mapping they they you know, they, they hijack a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but when it comes to the way a machine looks, yeah. they do a really, really good job. The, yeah, the Star Wars machine is, like, really good looking. You can yeah. walk into a room and nobody's going to say, Ugh. nobody's going to say, what is that? Nobody's going to yeah. say that artwork is ugly. Every person's going to look at that thing and say, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the big strong feature, or that's the, the kind of the selling point. I think is is the way it looks. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. So, for instance, I was on a work call. I was on a Skype call. We uh, for work, and sure enough, behind me are my cabinets. Right. So everyone who I work with, you know, they know I have all these arcade machines. Right. And a guy got on the call. Uh, one of our clients, one of our clients, I do insurance underwriting. If anyone needs to know, he gets on the call and we're talking to him and underwriting his insurance kind of stuff. And he's like, wow, I like your arcade cabinets behind you. I see a Neo Geo cabinet and I see a dragon's lair cabinet. What's that one in the middle? You know what I mean? And it's at games legends ultimate, right? You know, it doesn't have that curbside appeal that, you know, arcade one up machines have. He basically was looking at it. Like, what is that? Like squinting like, like, Ooh, that looks ugly. You know what I mean? But what he recognized those two, right? And Arcade One Up does that really well, just like uh, MVSX, just like iArcade. You knew what it was the minute he looked at these. He looks at these two. He's like, "What the hell is that? What is that monstrosity?" Um, but but then what also when it comes to the games, we had a guy in here earlier. I missed his chat. He said, uh, "As long as my wife and kids are happy with it, I'm happy with it." Is what he said. Yeah. And, and and guys, let me tell you something. My wife. Now that we have one from each, we have Toy Shock, Well Played, Legends Pinball, Arcade One Up. My wife tells me that the Arcade One Up machine is the most gorgeous pinball machine out of all of them, the Marvel pinball machine. She's like, it's absolutely breathtaking to look at. And it is. Um, but her favorite machine is the Well Played pinball machine. And, and I just don't get it. I just don't get it. She's a goofy, goofy gal. Now, my son, though, my son was really digging, really digging the Legends Pinball until I got the Marvel. And because my son is 20 and he's into all these movies, the Marvel hype train that's been going around the last 10 years. Think about it. He's been growing up with it the last 10 years. From 10 to 20, he's been growing up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. My son tells me that the best pinball machine we own is the Marvel pinball machine. He loves the games. He loves to play it. And I asked him what he thought of it. And he didn't bring up anything about the colors or jaggy graphics or anything like that. He didn't bring up any of that stuff. Now, when I get up there, I'm like, oh, I don't like this as much as my Legends Pinball. It's fun, and it looks good, but I don't like it as much as my Legends Pinball. And maybe that's because I'm spoiled rotten with this 32-inch screen and all that kind of stuff. So, guys, it's always going to come down to you as a person, your own personal tastes. You can take all this information that's out there on the Internet and then make your own informed decision. Or just let Michael B. tell you how wonderful it is, because you know he is. <laughs> Isn't that right, Michael B? Always positive? Uh, I try to be positive, but I'm also realistic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Pete, does I had a, a story, too, as well. Go ahead, buddy. I, I initially, when I started working from home, I had my uh, work PC on this on the same station, and people kept talking about my arcade game, so I had to move all my work stuff over and just put a green screen behind me because they thought I was at uh, at the arcade hanging out and having fun instead of working here at home. You know, so. <laughs> I had to change it up real quick. Michael B. 
I hope we didn't break your heart. I know you're excited about these machines. I just want to play some pinball, man. I'm excited. Yeah. About all I just want to play pinball. All right. Simple guys. as that. All right, guys. We should tie everything going into love it. it. Going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, it's going to come down to what you want out of your pinball machine and what you're willing to spend. You know what I mean? You got four great companies out there putting products out there, and it's up to you to buy the product that appeals to you. Does it have the features, the games, and the price tag? Um, and the performance that y'all are looking for. Uh, wait, did you guys just ping me in something? Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't I, see I, it. I can't wait until you you review that uh, Attack from Mars there, Michael, because I think you and I come from the same place mm -hmm. with our affinity for that particular product. So or, or those those tables. So I'm I'm a very. I hope you get it first, and uh, I get to hear what you got to say. Yeah, I'm excited, and usually I go really, really slow, and I won't release a review until like a couple of weeks or even sometimes a month afterwards. But I, I'm gonna do everything on this. If if I'm first, I want to share this with people and make sure people see this and get to experience. So I'll probably do the whole, you know, first impressions and full review. So I'll get a lot of coverage out of it if I'm one of the first. Oh yeah, we're, we're and, and we're gonna get thousands of mes uh, messenger. Uh, text about it as well so oh yeah 100 all right guys do me a favor make sure you subscribe to Rostalgia. subscribe to michael b the game genie subscribe to, to detroit pinball love also hit that uh tickle button for p dubs and subscribe to me as well we greatly appreciate it we always love hanging out with you on friday nights kind of a morbid episode this week everyone's uh hot and cold about their pinball machines but uh i think next week we're going to have some guests and get back to some major excitement uh, you guys don't want to miss it. Also, with us now hitting 30 episodes, we're going to be having new intros, new logos, new assets, all kinds of cool stuff coming your way. We got to keep the show fresh, man. We can't let things get stale around here. Go ahead. Yeah, and don't forget, guys, head over to Rostalgia's Teespring store where you can get your very own Super Game Room Dudes merch. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we plugged the merch. He plugged the merch. Carl, All whenever right. you're ready. All right, guys. So we appreciate you. We love you. I, hey, I was a little hard on some of you people today, but, you know, I, I got nothing but love for you. We appreciate you stopping by. And until next time, guys, we'll see you on the web.